China's so-called Boeing killer has just taken flight. The C-929, a wide-body jet designed to travel over 12,000 kilometers without refueling, is being called the plane that could finally break Boeing and Airbus's hold on the skies. It's sleek, ambitious, and powerful enough to raise alarm bells across the aviation industry. This could be the start of a seismic shift in who controls the future of flight. The headlines call it a record-shattering long-haul machine. Aviation analysts warn it could trigger price wars. And for the first time in decades, airlines from Asia to Africa are openly weighing whether they even need Boeing or Airbus anymore. That's how disruptive the C-929 appears to be on paper. But here's the question that matters. Is it really ready to deliver? Or is the hype flying higher than the jet itself? To answer that, we need to pull back the curtain on how this aircraft came to life and why its test flight in February 2025 wasn't just a milestone, but a global warning shot. The C929's journey began with a partnership that looked unstoppable and ended in a breakup that nearly killed the project. In 2015, China's COMAC, or Commercial Aircraft Corporation of China, and Russia's United Aircraft Corporation unveiled plans for a new wide-body jet, the CR929. Their goal was simple but audacious. Challenge Boeing's 787 Dreamliner and Airbus's A350 in the lucrative long-haul market. The arrangement seemed perfect. China offered industrial scale, with factories in Shanghai ready to produce major sections of the fuselage and wings. Russia brought decades of experience in aerodynamics and engine design. Together they hoped to spread the enormous cost of development, more than $2 billion, while presenting airlines with a cheaper alternative to Western aircraft. At the time, the market looked ready. Demand for long-haul jets was growing, especially in Asia, where travel between China, Europe, and the US was surging. If the CR929 could deliver similar performance to Boeing and Airbus at a lower cost, it might carve out a share of the market. But then geopolitics intruded, as Russia became embroiled in the war in Ukraine. Engineers were reassigned to defense projects. Sanctions piled up, cutting Russia off from Western technology and finance. Behind the scenes, disputes also emerged over who would control the jet's most valuable asset, the engine technology. Russia wanted more rights than China was willing to concede. By 2022, the partnership unraveled. For most analysts, that collapse was the end. Building a wide-body aircraft is considered one of the hardest feats in engineering. It requires vast supply chains, exacting safety standards, and experience that only Boeing and Airbus had truly mastered. Critics argued that without Russia, China couldn't possibly finish the job. But Beijing refused to quit. Instead, Comac rebranded the aircraft as the C-929 and pledged to complete it alone. Chinese engineers filled gaps once handled by Russian teams, and domestic suppliers were brought in to reduce dependence on foreign parts. Made in China 2025 plan, which aims to secure independence in critical technologies. With the C-929, Comac isn't just scaling up its earlier narrow-body jet, the C919. It's aiming straight at the heart of the long-haul market dominated by Boeing and Airbus. And when you look at the numbers, it's clear this aircraft was designed to make a statement. Start with size and range. The C929 is built to carry about 280 passengers, placing it directly in the same category as Boeing's 787 Dreamliner and Airbus's A350. Its projected range of 12,000 kilometers makes it capable of connecting some of the world's most competitive routes. Non-stop from Beijing to New York or Shanghai to London. These are the long-haul prestige routes that airlines use to showcase their fleets. Comac is sending a signal. The C929 isn't a regional experiment. It's designed to go head-to-head -head with the industry leaders on their own turf. The aircraft's physical footprint backs this up. With a 65-meter wingspan, the C929 is larger than the Dreamliner's 60 meters. Inside, its cabin measures 5.5 meters across, slightly wider than both the 787 and the A350. That may sound like a small difference, but in aviation, every centimeter counts. Wider cabins mean more flexibility for airlines. They can choose high-density seating to maximize budget operations, or more spacious premium layouts for long-haul business travelers. Either way, Passengers benefit from more space, legroom, and comfort. The cabin and cockpit designs add another layer. Comac has integrated real-time health monitoring systems that track the condition of the aircraft during flight. The cockpit includes adjustable smart seating and flexible lighting designed to reduce pilot fatigue. In the cabin, 
airlines can customize layouts with advanced LED systems to improve passenger comfort on ultra-long routes. These features may not sound revolutionary on their own, but together they suggest a serious attempt to match, and in some areas surpass, what Western rivals currently offer. Every modern aircraft is defined by its engines. They're the most complex, expensive, and failure-sensitive part of the machine. And for the C929, Comac has taken a gamble that could make or break the entire program. The CJ2000 turbofan. This is the first time China has attempted to field a high-thrust engine for a wide-body jet without outside help. The CJ2000 is projected to generate 35 tons of thrust, putting it in the same league as GE's Jianks and Rolls-Royce's Trent engines, the power plants behind the Dreamliner and the A350. Its 3-meter fan diameter and large overall footprint are designed to maximize efficiency. That means lower fuel burn per passenger kilometer and quieter operations. But beyond performance, the symbolism here is enormous. Comac's smaller narrow-body jet, the C919, depends on Western engines from CFM International, a joint venture between GE and Safran. That reliance has always been a vulnerability. In a world of sanctions, trade disputes, and tightening export controls, a single outside supplier could shut down the entire program. With the CJ2000, China is making a bid to free itself from that dependency forever. That freedom comes at a steep cost. Engine development is the hardest part of aerospace. It takes years of trial, error, and refinement to reach the reliability that airlines demand. A jet engine doesn't just need to work once. It needs to work flawlessly across tens of thousands of flight hours, in every imaginable condition, without fail. That's why only a handful of nations, the US, Britain, France, and Russia, have ever successfully developed engines in this category. For China, the CJ2000 is a leap into that exclusive club. The path has not been smooth. Early prototypes designed for the C919 struggled with stability and reliability. Chinese engineers were forced to go back to the drawing board, investing billions into new test facilities and recruiting talent from across the global aerospace sector. The re-engineered version, now tailored for the C929, represents years of iteration. Comac insists it can match Western rivals on efficiency and durability, but the proof will only come in real-world operation. And that's where the biggest risk lies. Full-scale flight tests for the CJ2000 aren't expected until 2029. Until then, the C929 will likely rely on interim solutions, leaving a gap between ambition and reality. For airlines considering orders, that timeline raises real questions. Can Comac deliver engines that not only perform, but also meet international certification standards? Will spare parts, service expertise, and reliability data be available fast enough to build trust? If the CJ2000 succeeds, the impact will be profound. Airlines would gain access to a fully Chinese-built widebody at a discount price, and Beijing would have secured independence in the most critical part of aviation. Sanctions would lose their bite. Boeing and Airbus would face not just a new competitor in airframes, but a rival with control over the entire supply chain. But if it fails, the consequences could be equally dramatic. The C929 might struggle to win orders outside China's domestic carriers, and Comac could find itself trapped in the same cycle of dependence that has limited its earlier jets. The CJ2000 is therefore more than an engine, it is the centerpiece of China's aerospace gamble. The point on which the entire C929 project may rise or fall. And that brings us to the next battlefield. Because even with a promising design and a bold engine program, what will ultimately decide the C929's fate is not engineering, it's economics. Aircraft design wins headlines, but price wins markets. And in this arena, the C929 may be Boeing and Airbus's worst nightmare. For all the excitement, the C929 still faces obstacles that could decide its fate. Designing a widebody is one thing. Convincing the world to fly it is another. The biggest challenge is certification. To operate internationally, the C929 must be cleared by regulators like the FAA in the US and EASA in Europe. These approvals are notoriously strict, and Comac has struggled here before. Its earlier C919 is still waiting for certification years after rollout, limiting it mostly to domestic routes. Until the C929 clears those hurdles, global airlines will hesitate. Next comes reliability and support. Boeing and Airbus have spent decades building worldwide service networks, ensuring that spare parts and train crews are available wherever their planes fly. 
Comac doesn't yet have that infrastructure. If AC929 is grounded in Nairobi or Sao Paulo without immediate support, the costs to airlines could be crippling. Then there's perception. Passengers are used to flying on Boeing and Airbus, brands with long safety records. Comac has little track record outside China. Airlines know that trust is as important as performance, and it's not built overnight. Financing also matters. Boeing and Airbus benefit from established credit agencies and leasing arrangements that make buying jets easier for airlines. Comac may rely heavily on Chinese state-backed financing, but convincing global banks to put the C929 on equal footing will take time. Finally, there's the question of timing. Flight testing has only just begun, and the CJ-2000 engine won't be fully proven until 2029. In aviation, delays are common, but Comac doesn't yet have the credibility cushion to absorb them. A major slip could seriously damage confidence in the program. Individually, each of these hurdles is tough. Together, they form the real test for the C929. Overcoming them would mark a historic shift in aviation. Failing them could leave the aircraft remembered as an ambitious step that fell short. But Comac isn't stopping here. The C929 may be the current headline, but it's only the start of a much bigger plan. One that includes even larger jets and eventually, a supersonic aircraft designed to outpace anything flying today.